In this video, I'm going to have a look at the various ways in which Python lists can be created, i.e. objects of the list class. A list is a sequence type defined by the list class which contains methods for manipulating and processing lists. I recommend using the list constructor to create a list, i.e. an instance of the list class, in other words, an object. Consider these two examples. The first one here is list underscore a is assigned and then we can see we have list and the brackets. Now this is a constructor. It is a constructor that will construct a list. But if you look in the brackets here, you can see there is no definitions of a list. There's no elements suggested. The brackets are empty. This creates an empty list to which elements can be added by appropriate code later in the program. And a good visual representation of an empty list is shown here. You can see that we label it with the name list underscore a and we just show an object. If you look inside the object you can see there is nothing there suggesting that it is empty. If we look at this example, on this occasion we've chose a different name, list underscore b, and that is assigned, and here you can see I'm using a constructor for the list class, and inside the brackets you can see we have these, and that is 2, 3, 5, 7. Now what this is going to do, it's going to create a list with four elements, and these elements will store 2, 3, 5 and 7. Now it's quite useful to have a mental picture for what a list would look like and I'm choosing this vertical description here and you will remember from the last video I showed this also horizontal but I'm going to go with this one here and you can see that it's called list B because that's the name here in the code and you can see it's got the four elements and it's storing the 2, the 3, the 5 and the 7 because that's where the numbers were declared here and here you can see you have the index going from 0 through to 3 now it goes to 3 which you must remember is the fourth element because we always start off the index with a 0 now this look of a list is very useful when you're writing your algorithms but if you remember from the last video I showed you a different representation which I'm going to show here and that's whereby we have the name of the list appearing in the label, this being the object, and if you look at the object, you can see it's got four elements here, and the elements again go through from zero to three, but look what's in the elements, and you can see I've got the arrows, and what those arrows are doing, they are referencing these objects, and of course these objects are instances of the integer class, which is the 2, the 3, the 5 and the 7, which was taken from here in the program code. Now, as I recommended in the previous video in this playlist, you need to have a mental picture of the list, and I suggested that you go with both of these. But for pragmatic reasons, when you're writing your algorithms, it's usual to think of a list as shown here in the knowledge that what you have under the hood is this relationship here whereby the elements have the reference to the various objects that are effectively residing within the list. Here is an example of another program statement that will create a list and if you have a look the name of the list is going to be list underscore c and it's assigned this which is going to invoke the constructor of the list class and if we have a look at what's inside these brackets we can see we have this and this is going to create a three element list with the first element having the string red the next element having the string green and the last element having the string blue and what we can see we will have is the following we have a list and the list has this name as taken from the code and we can see that this is red green and blue taken from here the red the green and the blue and of course we can see the indices going from 0 to 1 to 2. Elsewhere on the channel there is a video on the 
Python range function. And the range function is very useful when we're dealing with lists. What I'll do, I'll quickly go over the range function in this video, and then we will see how we can use it when we create our lists in Python. Consider the following example. You can see we have x is assigned, then we have range, and in brackets we've got 0, 10, and 1. Now when I think of a function, I like to reflect it upon a schematic diagram. And I'm showing that diagram here, where you can see the box represents the function, and the function will have an input, and the function will produce an output. If we have a look at this code, we can see that the range takes as its input 0, 10, and 1. So the 0, 10, and 1 are the arguments, and those arguments are passed as the input, and they then go to the range function, and what pops out is this lot. Now if we have a look at why this pops out for these numbers, we can see that this 0 is telling the range function that it is to start at 0, which it does here. This is telling it the step which means it goes from 0 to 1, which is a step of 1. Then it goes from 1 to 2, which is obviously a step of 1. Then it goes from 2 to 3, which is obviously a step of 1. And it keeps on going up in steps of 1. And it stops at 9. It doesn't go to what this suggests it may go to, 10. This is the stop value, which means it never goes as far as this value. So if we're going to go up in steps of 1, we will get as far as 9, and the range function will not allow you to go any further. It won't allow you to get to the 10. And of course, all these outputs, we can see, will then be bound to the variable x. So we can see that choosing numbers here will give us a particular output as shown in this case as being from 0 through to 9, all stepping up in steps of 1. To make sure we're familiar with the range function, let's have a look at another couple of examples. Well, here you can see that I'm using the range function, and I'm passing in 0, 10, and this time I'm passing in 2, which is a step of 2. Now, if I look to the schematic diagram, what I need to realise is that the 0, the 10, and the 2 are going to be the input to the range function, and the range function will produce the following output. Now let's have a look at the output. We can see that this is a zero, because that is the starting point as shown by this zero. And here we can see the step is two, which means we go from zero to two, which means it's gone up in a step of two. And of course, two to four is a step of two. And four to six, again, a step of two. And six to eight, well, it's obviously a step of two. But if you look to this, you can see that that is 10. When I'm at the 8, if I was to go up a step of 2, it would go to 10. But we're not allowed to go as far as 10 because this is the stop value. So when we use this function, this is the output we will get. 0, 2, 4, 6 and 8. And of course, that will be said to be bound to the variable x. Here is another example, and on this occasion you can see I'm now starting at 2, whereas as the previous two I started at 0, and I'm going to have the stop still being 10, but on this occasion I've changed the step again, it's now 3. So if I have a look at the function, what we can see is we're going to pass in the 2, the 10, and the 3 as the arguments to the function. They go in, and what is produced as the output is 2, 5, and 8. Why 2? Well, that's because that's the start value shown here. And if we go from 2 to 5, you can see we're stepping up in 3, which is what this is telling us to do. And then when we go from the 5 to the 8, we're stepping up in 3, which again is because of this here. When we go from the 8, if we decide to step up in 3, it would go to 11. But we're not allowed to go that far, because that 11 is beyond the 10. So we don't go to the 11, because this is the stop value. And of course, this then is bound to the variable x. So this program statement will produce a list, and it'll produce the list 
based upon the return from the range function. And if you have a look at the range function, you can see that we're passing in 0, 10 and 2. Now, this is one of the examples we've seen in this video. So what we're going to get is the following. We're going to get a list that's created whereby we start at 0 for one of the elements, which is this here. We then see that this is a step of 2. So the next one we go to is 2. And then we go to 4, which is a step of 2, then to 6 then to 8, and of course, adding 2 to the 8 takes us to 10, but that's the stop value. So what this has done is produce these values, and of course, the list will have the index going through from 0 through to 4. And of course, the last element is labelled 4, because we always need to remember we start at 0 when we're talking about the elements of a list the index of the list starts at zero and goes up as you can see one two three four what's in the list what's stored in the elements is dictated by this range function here now here's another example of a program statement that will create a list and we can see that list underscore e is assigned and this is calling the constructor for the list class and we're passing in w x, y, and z as a string. Now what this is going to do is produce a four element list storing w, x, y, and z as shown here. You can see that we have the four elements. The w is in the first element, the x is in the second element, and so on. To make sure we're clear on how lists are created, I've got a series of very simple programs that will show us how a list is created and show us what's in the list. And here you can see I'm creating an empty list, and this line is printing that list. So when this program runs, this is what we get. You can see it shows us two square brackets, and have a look in the center, there's nothing there. Now there's nothing there because this has created an empty list. If we look at this program, we can see that we're producing a list on this line, and that list is going to have four elements, and the elements are going to start 2, 3, 5, and 7 in sequence. And then here we're printing list B, and what we will see is this. And you can see the square brackets tell us we have a list, and in the list you can see we've got 2, 3, 5, and 7, which is precisely what we defined here. If we look at this one, we're using the range example that we've seen already in this video, and the output from this one is shown here. You see that this created a range of numbers going from 0 through to 8, stepping up in 2. And this line prints that list, which is here. You can see we have the square brackets, and have a look in the brackets, and you can see we have the 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. Now this we've already seen in the video as the program statement that will create a list. And if we have a look what's being created, we're passing in W, X, Y, and Z as a string. And here we're printing the list. So what we will see at the output is shown here. And you can see we have the W, the X, the Y, and the Z, all as separate strings. Now W is obviously one character. Now, if you remember in Python, there's no such thing as a character type. We have a string with a length of 1. So we have W, X, Y, and Z, which are the characters of this string, but these are not character types. They are strings with a length of 1. Now, here you can see we have a program statement that creates a list. But have a look what we're passing to the constructor. We're passing in Fred, which is a string, we're passing in Smith, which is a string, and we're passing in 41, which is clearly an integer. So perhaps this would be a list that was the person's name, their first name, their surname, and 41 could be their age. And what this will do, it'll create a list with three elements, storing Fred as a string, storing Smith as a string, and storing 41 as an integer. So if we were to consider what the list would look like when this executes, it looks as we can see here. It's got the name list underscore f, 
and we can see we have three elements going from 0 to 1 to 2 as the indices. If we look at the first element, we can see that has the string Fred. The second one has the string Smith. And the last one has the integer value of 41. Now, what this is telling us is that a list doesn't have to store all of the same type. These two are both strings, but this one is an integer. So unlike other programming languages, which have arrays that have to have all of the same types, with a list, you can see that we can have mixed types as shown here. So here you can see I've taken that program statement, put it in a program, and here I'm printing list underscore f. And what we will see at the output is this. And you can see we have the string Fred, we have the string Smith, and we have the integer 41. And you can see that those three are stored within the square brackets, which tells us that this is an example of a list. Now, Python has an alternative syntax for creating lists. So a Python list can be created using an alternative syntax from the examples we've seen to date, where we use the constructor to actually create the list, the constructor of the list class. And if we remember, what the constructor will be responsible for invoking is the underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, method within the class. Let's have a look at the alternative syntax and compare it to the syntax we've already seen in this video. And we can see that in this table. If you look here, we know that this is how we create an empty list, but this will also create an empty list. So you simply need to be aware that there's two ways of creating an empty list. This here, well, we can see we created an instance of the list class. This will also create the same list. And in this case, with the values 2, 3, 5, and 7 in both cases. Here, you can see that we create an instance of the list class, which has red, green, and blue as its elements. And we can create the same list using this syntax here. So in essence, we're dropping the use of the list and these brackets. I'm not going to give a recommendation as to which of the alternative syntax you should use. However, my preference is to use these here. And that's because I always write my programs with the view to them being object orientated in nature. And I like the idea of calling the constructor to create the list. Not least because when I do my analysis and my design, I'm always thinking in terms of objects. So to emphasize the different syntax, you can see here that I'm using the alternative syntax that I've just introduced. And here I'm printing out each of the lists that have been generated from these three lines of code here. And if you have a look at the output, you can see you have this, where this is list underscore W, which is empty. This is list underscore X, which has two, three, five, and seven taken from here. And this is list underscore Y, which has the red, the green, and the blue. Now, the program here, I am going to edit and change it in the following way. And you can see I've introduced the word list, and here I've got two brackets. Look at the difference in the brackets here and here. And then I've done something similar here. And if I look at the output from this program, I get this. And if you compare these two, you can see that the outputs are identical, showing us that this and this produce the same lists. They're just, as I've already said, alternative syntax. Repeating, I prefer this approach, but I'm not making a recommendation. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?